All right, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the channel. I know my intro is cheesy, <laughs> but uh, I found this uh, this clip. It's about eleven minutes long, uh, from California Insider, and uh, I just thought it was pretty interesting. And we're gonna we're gonna take a look at it. This is on uh, California immigrant parents feel like they're losing their voice and their kids' education. And, uh, you know, I've been uh, looking into a lot of this stuff and seeing what's going on, uh, especially during, um, I'm raising, I've got a 13-year-old. And when the pandemic hit and stuff, and but he was in a decent school, but there was a few things he told me about because we talked about it. I. I asked him, let me know if he feels uncomfortable about something or if they're talking about something. And, you know, and a couple of times he said, hey, this, this, this or happened at, at school. But this is the thing. I don't care what anybody's sexual preference is, right? You're an adult. Go do what you want. But when you're throwing stuff in the face of children... I have a problem with it, especially if they're, I mean, to, to anybody's kid, not just my own. I, I feel like uh, I need to be a voice, too, for, uh, for parents representing our children across our country. And that I don't, I don't want him being taught goofy sexual things that homosexuals do or or, the, or try to tell him he's in his wrong he's in a wrong body or something of this foolishness uh i i don't want him being talked to like that i mean just think all the awkward conversations some parents had to make over the past year maybe longer of, you know, I've had him come up here and ask me something, and I'm like thinking, oh, my God, this is awkward. Okay, how am I going to handle this question? Why am I put in this position? Which, right, you shouldn't be. Some conversations are left for later when they're older. Not not when they're preteens. And, and then in some of these schools, they're, they're even teaching them this garbage a lot younger. I think it's terrible and disgusting, and like I said, all full disclosure, I, I don't care what somebody's sexual preference is. Go do, go live your life. Go do what you got to do. Do for you. Nobody cares. But don't ram this stuff down my kid's throat, or that, for that matter, any, any anybody else's child. So we're going to take a look at this. Um... I'll be commentarying on it, you know, throughout it. Like I said, it's just an 11 minute, minute clip. And uh, let's see what they have to say about what's going on in California and what the parents are dealing with. It probably started during the pandemic when some parents realized that the material that their children were being presented with, this is on their little Zoom classes they were getting, uh, was not appropriate teachers that wanted to explain the proper way for oral sex between wow. two members of the same uh, wow. sex. And now, when my, when my boy was home during the pandemic, he had had his laptop, and I always controlled his, like I would, I mean, it is an inconvenience, but, you know, we got to do what we got to do. So when he does his homework, he was sitting in the room with me where I could see what he's doing on the computer. And I never saw any of this. Here, I'm in the state of Tennessee. I would have hit the roof if I would have saw something like that. <laughs> I'd have been videoing it. I would have been screaming to the to the high heavens like, uh, what are you doing? You know, indoctrinating my kid. But I did not experience this. But we all know. California usually sets the tone uh, for these liberal ideas, this woke agenda, and then this this plague will spread across the country. So I just wanted to clarify that, that I personally did not experience my son uh, having this kind of indoctrination 
but there was a couple of instances uh, he said that they had. I'll, I'll go ahead and let you tell you. I guess it's no big deal because he's not going to that school anymore. I won't name the school. He had told me a buddy of his went because they had these clubs that they could meet in the morning, right? And so he come home one day and he's like, yeah, my friend wanted to know what this club was about. So he went and then he then he said his buddy regretted it. So in a way it was humorous and then in a way it's despicable. But the, the principal was involved in this. Uh, according to my son, he said the principal was a homosexual, which I, I don't care. But the kids shouldn't have known about it if he was. Keep your personal crap to yourself. But the thing was is that they had these these little uh, club group meetings in the morning that was supposed to be a safe space. And that's what he told me. Now, I knew he was finishing out this that school when he was going to be going to a different school, which would be this year. So this happened last last year. And uh, which I was like, OK. And he didn't seem to be traumatized by it because we have a communication, you know, about some things. Right. And uh, so. I mean, if he would have continued to stay in that school, you know. I probably would have come, spoke up and said something. Maybe I should have said something because do, do these other parents know what's going on? Because they were calling these clubs different names, you know. I guess to to trick 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 people trick the parents. Well, you're going to book club. Well, well, okay, you know, you figure they're studying by. So I I don't know. I don't remember if he told me what they called the club. If it was some kind of diversity thing, is what's coming to my mind. But whatever. But anyway, I just wanted to just throw that out there. Informing them that if you're not sure that you are a boy or a girl, don't worry. We can help you change if that's what you want. And we don't even have to tell your parents about it. Oh, go on. Uh, we started requesting public records to get more information because it's like we had scratched the surface. We knew there was a lot more happening behind closed doors. We were just trying to attend a board meeting and then we posted it on um, multiple parents, posted it on their social medias, on their Facebooks. And then we see that all these people outside of Glendale are posting to come and protest against us. And who outside of the, the Glendale city. So somebody's in, in an adjacent city is coming and getting in their business. That that does annoy me right there. That that does bother me like what? what? I'm not going to go into another city and start complaining about what they're doing. Those parents in that city need to complain. They need to be voting for these people on school boards and, and whatnot. That's their business, right? My city is my business. It's it's almost like the saying, you've got to take care of your own backyard before you can jump over and try to take care of somebody else's mess. Who did they invite? But they invited Antifa. Why would they invite Antifa? Why is this race? This, why would they invite Antifa? Isn't Antifa for uh, racial discrimination and this kind of thing? This has nothing to do with race. People who are, are uh, homosexuals or trans, they're all walks of life. But they make up a very small portion of the population, maybe 3% if that. And there's so much police presence that the city of Glendale had to tap into their outside resources and have Pasadena Police Department join, Monrovia Police Department join. They had neighboring cities coming in trying to basically control the crowd. And Armenian parents, as well as some other parents, they would die for their kids, let me tell you. On today's California Insider. It's great to have you on, welcome. Thank you, CMEC. It's my pleasure to be here. You know, there, is a, there was a movement in Glendale where parents uh, wanted to go and talk at the board meetings, school board meetings. Uh, some parents in Glendale have been frustrated with the way the school system is run, what, what, is, what kids are educated in, and we had a chance to talk to some of them. And unfortunately, there was a lot of, uh, some level of violence. People got arrested. This was a school board meeting, and you're the sale. Can you tell us what, what happened? Why would it get violent? I don't understand that. I mean, they're just protesting. Hey, you know, the parents. 
<clears throat> Just can you please not teach this rubbish to our children? I doubt highly that the parents were causing the problem. It was Antifa shows up and causes a problem. That's just my opinion. And from your perspective. Sure. Let me give you a little background about Glendale first so we understand about the city. It's a city of about 200,000, just north of Los Angeles. Uh, we have our own school district, and we have been known for having a very good school district uh, in the past. The population of Glendale has about 40% uh, of Armenian uh, ethnicity uh, individuals. And Armenian, but a wide range of Armenian, Armenians from Iran, Armenians from the Middle East, Armenians from Russia, from Armenia, from all over. And, and they, okay, you just heard he named off all those places these people are from. And there's 40% of the population of that city. What, are the, what, what do you think that woke agenda expected? They probably did know that there was going to be an outrage. But 40% of these people from all these other countries who are ranging from probably Muslims to Christians to, you know, all these other kinds of religions who don't want this mess taught to their children. And, uh, of course, they have commonalities. We have the Armenian language, the Armenian uh, religion, uh, and they're all uh, dedicated, these parents, to raising their children in the very best way possible. Make no mistake about that. They are committed and dedicated parents who will make almost any sacrifice that they have to for their children's good. And that's just a historical or a cultural thing that Armenians have done. Other other ethnicities also do the same, but in Glendale, that's what, that's what we see. So it probably started during the pandemic when some parents realized that the material that their children were being presented with, this is on their little Zoom classes they were getting, uh, was not appropriate. Inappropriate sex education. Teachers that want... There was a clip. I probably should have grabbed it for this segment. Uh, there was a clip that the governor of New York had made saying it was a mistake to have the kids out of school uh, during that time period. And my first thought was, why would she say that? The, because, and, the, and then my thought process went, it was a mistake because we... Um, parents found out what you guys have been doing <laughs> and got pissed off about it. You know, I mean, it's sad and comical at the same time because she literally said, oh, it was a bad mistake. I mean, y'all look, look, look her up. Uh, the governor of New York, she had said it was a mistake to have the uh, them out of school and then learning via uh on the computers at home it's because they got found out <laughs> they got found out wanted to explain uh the proper way for oral sex between oh, wow. two members of the same uh, wow. sex um it went even further it even now whether i think any normal person adult should agree if that's inappropriate to teach a child about oral sex? Oh my, for Pete's sake. Why? Why would you feel it was necessary? Now, you know, I was a kid back in the 70s. Yeah, I'm telling my age. I mean, they did have, I think when I was in sixth grade or so, or something like that, they did send a permission slip home to... Uh, they had some kind of sex education film that they were going to show the students. And basically, it was just showing the biological of the male or female body and the reproduction system. That was, that was it. And I guess that was controversial then. I mean, my mother is Christian. She's passed away now. But she, she gave me and my brother permission to go to these things. But uh, 
I mean, they weren't t- they weren't telling us how to do oral sex for Pete's sake. I mean, and like I said, that was back in the seventies. Yeah, I'm old. So that even exists. Okay, interesting. Yes, definitely. They got to the point where they were approaching the children and informing them that if you're not sure that you are a boy or a girl, don't worry. We can help you change if that's what you want. And we don't even have to tell your parents about it. Oh, my God. Uh, We started requesting public records to get more information because it's like we had scratched the surface. We knew there was a lot more happening behind closed doors. Why would you give your money to people? Armenian parents, as well as some other parents, they would die for their kids, let me tell you. There's, there's nothing more important uh, to an Armenian family uh, than, than family. So these parents would speak amongst themselves and complain and they decided to get together and unite and present their objections to the Glendale Unified School District Board of Education. And that Board of Education meets uh, generally about once a week. And that's, and that's the proper way to do it. They get together, they express their concerns. That's, that's how it should be done, right? We were just trying to attend a board meeting and then we posted it on um, multiple parents, posted it on their social medias, on their Facebooks. And then we see that all these people outside of Glendale are posting to come and protest against us. Racist, sexist, anti-gay, Christian, sex. How are you racist and sexist because you don't want your children to know about oral sex? Or you don't want your children to, for somebody to implant the idea into their head? Maybe some of these children never would have had an inkling to think, oh, maybe I am in the wrong body. Now, granted, there are some people. They probably already know by the time they're five, they feel a little different. It's very a small percentile, very small. But it, it, it happens. It's true. And that's fine. But to implant and indoctrinate this into a vast majority of children that wouldn't even have thought about it because their little minds are full of mush. And, and these people know that they are easily can indoctrinate these children. And who did they invite? But they invited Antifa. Antifa has never been in Glendale before, uh, except on June 6th they did. So we went there to, you know, be parents at, at a board meeting, and we were faced with people with double, triple masks and bandanas and umbrellas, and, and you know, they, like, literally just crashed, and, and it was the point where, you know, the police weren't able to barricade, the, you know, separate the, the two groups. Um, there was this lady with a microphone. I remember, I, I, like, turned around, I was just, like, so shocked. She's screaming at us, saying, Christian fascists, go away directing wow these these poor little parents who've probably never had protested about anything ever but they feel passionate because they love their children they want to protect their minds their eyes and their ears and i'd probably go as far as to say is probably some of them were paid to go do it go let me give you some money we'll put them all on a bus, take them down, and we know this has happened in the past, <laughs> take them down there and cause problems, disrupt the protests. So what, are they trying to make the parents look bad? But in my eyes, it's not making the parents look bad. It's making them look like morons, and Tifa look like goofy morons. Why would you disrupt parents being concerned about their children? That's a fundamental thing biological thing to do you would die for your kid you'd push him out of the way and let the bus hit you right i mean so this is this is very passionate and important to people and i i do want to say i think it's a it's a small minority of people pushing this woke agenda and trying to make us think like the when we watch the media that you know there's more 
people that want this than actually really do. I mean, that's just my, my thoughts on it. Hate towards the parents, saying that you're homophobic, you're anti-homo, you're racist. And that's a lie, too. I mean, because I don't care if somebody's gay. I have gay friends. I've worked with gay people. Guys, I'm old. I've seen this for years. Nobody, nobody cares. But all of a sudden, because you don't want your children to know about it, you're, you're gay, you're anti-gay, you're anti-homophobic, you're a racist, you're a bigot. It's just ridiculous. And I have noticed on that side of the aisle, if they don't have a substance to argue with, because how could you argue with that? How could you argue with a parent that parents want the best for their children? Whether they're whether they're athe even atheists don't want this. I've heard atheists talking and they don't want this. But how could you argue with this? How could it doesn't make sense? How could how what is the defense? So what they have to do, since they don't have a a good defense to defend what they're doing is that they got to call you names and that's all they've got that's all they've got because i haven't heard a good legitimate reason and if somebody could give me one i'll listen i'm not saying it's going to change my mind but i'll listen to if somebody has a legitimate reason why my kid needs to learn about having oral sex in class at school please let me know you're white supremacists. Which you're is mostly immigrants, right? These are all, you know. Mostly <laughs> immigrants. Yeah. Armenia, I mean, out of that group, um, there were Armenians, Latinos, uh, other ethnicities, and some white as well. But it was mainly a group of uh, people of color. Armenians, if we can say they're people of color. Uh, Middle Easterners, if we can say they're people of color. And I was in uh, Barcelona, Spain on a convention, and I saw it on TV, and I became very concerned about that. So, um, you know, when the dust settled, you know, everything was, was uh, continued until the next day and the day after. When we started to get comments uh, from the very uh, top of state government all the way to the city council level, and that was that the parents, the message was, these parents are haters, that they're bigots, that they're racist, that they're anti-homo, that they're anti l And that's Gavin Newsom's state. And we all know about the homeless and the people dying, the fentanyl, the border. California is just becoming a shithole. And they're just getting hammered by this and by all the rest of it. It's insane. LGBTQ. And do they accuse you of, uh, you guys are painted in a way where maybe you have a problem with the LGBTQ community or, or other people? What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, that's what they want to paint, right? It's easy. I mean, we saw during COVID that the basic um, emotion of fear was the easiest way to control people. And they're doing, it's the same playbook, right? Let's cause fear. Let's say that these people are hateful and that you should fear them. And that's not what's going on at all. Um, in fact, you know, I'm actively working on a campaign for a gay candidate in a congressional race. So, you know, if, if this was about being against the LGBTQ community or being homophobic or being hateful, um, that wouldn't be the case. After yeah, and that, that's the point I was trying to make, too. But they want to make it that way because they can't come up with a, with a good defense argument to justify this kind of teaching in the school. So they have to start calling you names because most people don't care. or mo a lot of, I'm sure a lot of you out there, you have friends that are gay. And they might feel the same way I do. They might feel the same way other people do that this is not justified. You shouldn't do this to children. It's abuse. It's abuse to children. I think it's sexual abuse. These people are criminals. 
just the officials in California, the, the school districts, this is sexual abuse of, a ch of children, teaching them this nonsense. After seeing parents like me going to the school board, talking and um, our speeches going viral and the whole nation waking up and conservative Glendale waking up to hold on a minute. This is really happening in Glendale and them getting all this bad press and pressure from parents and, and community members. The Glendale Teachers Union members went to Senator Anthony Portentino and they said, what do we have to do to get these parents to stop and stop coming after us, stop harass, so-called harassing us? Um, which meant basically, how do we stop these parents from coming to these board meetings? These parents aren't going to stop. Either they're going to they're going to keep protesting, or they're going to pull their children out. Which, if they can, I would recommend do it. If I know not everybody can homeschool their kids, and especially it's very expensive to send your children to private schools. We need to pass a bill to to give parents a certificate because the 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 federal government gives each school what depending on the state 12 14 thousand per child why can't they just give you a voucher and you go choose the school that you want your child to go to and you know what i bet the i bet the public schools would straighten their act up because they'll lose all that money things and talking and senator anthony portentino uh cooks up a bill sb 596 that will literally criminalize parents who come into public and talk about these issues. Are police that is terrifying. That's some Nazi Germany stuff right there. That you can't uh, protect your child's mind, eyes, and ears from indoctrination. And that you're going to make parents criminal. He's going to be called and have to file police report and and jail parents or fine parents for every time a teacher feels harassed because a parent is approaching them and asking them, why are you going off talk topic? Why are you going off curriculum and teaching my kids things that go against my beliefs and my, you know, family values? So it's, it's not even, it, it just makes no sense. And the bill doesn't even protect uh, children. So that bill is not just, it says people. So if a child uh, let's say a senior, a 10th grader says some, or I'm sorry, a, 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 t a high schooler, 10th grader or a senior, anybody says a comment to a teacher and the teacher feels so-called harassed. Will that bill criminalize that child as well? Remember, that is just insane. And I just wanted to touch upon that. Um, I saw this. I'm going to put this link in the description and, uh, get this for you guys so y'all can go and check him out he does have some other documentaries and stuff and he has a second channel and i think there might be more to this video on his second channel i've i keep looking back at the clock because i've got to go pick up my son <laughs> that's why i was just trying to get this done because it was kind of a short video but anyway um there you have it i that's what's going on whether you have children or you don't, how do you feel about that? Uh, should parents have the right to know what their children are being taught? My opinion is yes. Uh, I mean, let's say you're an atheist. You don't, obviously, because they took Christianity out of school. So you don't want, let's say you're an atheist, you don't want them teaching them Christianity. Or you don't want them teaching Islam or whatever the case may be, you don't want them teaching them certain things, right? I mean, everybody probably agrees with that, but why this? Why is this? Oh, my God, we're going to throw you in jail because you went at, and, and the teacher's calling it harassment. So I call the teacher and go, hey, yeah, my son told me, uh, you know, you guys were discussing this, this, and that. And then she goes and reports me, and I'm talking calmly? That's insanity. But anyway, let me know how you think. Thank you for joining me, and peace.